When you say I do, it's usually until death do you part. But unfortunately, with the rising rates of divorce in some countries as high as 42%, we can see that divorce is becoming a harsh reality for many of those who tie the knot. So then what do you do if you are going for a divorce or if you've had one? Is there life after divorce and separation? Well, that's what we're going to be discussing on today's DKW show. I've got some fab guests with me today who will be talking about their experiences and have some tips to share with you. So ladies, grab your cuppa. It's Sunday, 4 p.m. DKW. You don't want to miss this one. Hi ladies, that's right, it's DKW right now and we're talking divorce. A harsh, harsh reality for some people out there who said I do at the beginning and were madly in love and then for whatever reasons things have gone wrong and now they've had to divorce and separate. But is there life after divorce? That's what we're going to be talking about on today's show and I've got my fab guests with me. I've got Shireen and I've got Yolanda, our angel. <laughs> Lisa, Hi. Lisa, it's great to have you on the show. Ladies, 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 divorce. We're going to be discussing it on today's show. What, what are your dibs on it? Tell me. You, Landa, you're looking at me, you go for it. <laughs> you're staring at me like... In fact, you know what? Before I even go into that, Yolanda, our angel, it's lovely to have you back in the studio with us. Yeah, well, I have never been in the studio, to be honest. I've always been <laughs> no, in the street. It feels but... like you've been there because you're our angel. <laughs> but it's nice to have. It's nice to be here with you, guys. Oh, we missed you. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I've got a video. I've been told we've got a video on oh, you, gosh. so we're going to surprise you. For those don't of you who don't that. know, Yolanda, she's one of our DKW angels who's usually on the streets doing Easter. street interviews. <laughs> so. Let's see this clip about our lovely Yolanda. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, we'll go into the video. They said the video's not ready, so we're going to the video later. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I've got the producer going. <laughs> but ladies, let's go into it then in that case. Divorce, 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 divorce. Tell me, are you guys divorcees? Let me just throw it at you like that. Yes. Have, you, or have you ever been a divorcee? Yeah. Yes, I am. Yes. Yes. Really? I am. Guess, just I give finally us a, am. Really? <laughs> give, just give us a little dib on the finally. Was it really that bad or what happened? It was, it was really bad. It was really hard. It was very difficult. But yes, you seem so put together and rounded and happy yeah. now. I mean, how did you yeah. get through it? Well, I received a lot of help, but it, it, was, it was tough. It wasn't easy. It was um, five years. Five years. Five years trying to get divorced. Five separ years. Separated. Do you know, yeah. we're going to go into that because five years is a long time. I don't know yeah. if I would have the guts to stick it for a divorce for five years. I'd probably just rather just stay separated. Yeah, But we'll get into that. Lisa, I'm going to throw okay. the ball at you. Lisa, how was your experience? Just a little tip of the iceberg. Um, well, I was divorced at a young age. Wow. So um, I. Uh, went through it at uh, like 24, 25. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. That must have been really hard as a young person. Yeah, it definitely but was. But the thing is, you're so bubbly, you're confident, you're very outspoken. <laughs> you know, for some people, it would be a real knock on their self-esteem. I think it takes you time to get over it. I mm. wouldn't say that for anybody that it's an easy process yeah. at all. Um, I think I was quite lucky in the fact that there was no like children involved and things like that, which I think can add a, a whole lot of stress and problems to um, a divorce because nobody gets divorced when you're happy. Yeah, so the whole true. process, you know, can never be I don't think that easy and that amicable because you're going to butt heads somewhere along the line. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it isn't easy at all. Wow. Well, we're going to hear more about your story later on in the show today. 
And Shireen. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Shireen, just give yes. us a little tip on yours because many people, well, they've heard your story before, yes. but probably not from this perspective. So yeah. what do you have to say for the ladies who are watching the show today well, who want to know more about your story later on? Oh, well, I'm looking forward to giving my story. <laughs> you know, I love talking about it. But the divorce, the divorce um, was very, very painful. Mm. And it's not, for me, it wasn't like... Like Yolanda, you know how she said, finally. Because yeah. for some people it is. Mm. And towards the end, I think I did feel that way actually. But like Lisa knows me very well. And those who know, it was a very painful, painful thing because wow. I didn't want it. Mm. So sometimes you get into the situation where the other person wants out, mm. but you don't. So I was one of those people. Wow. I'd love to hear that side of it. I mean, that's a side that's really not spoken about sometimes. It's mm. like, yeah, I need to get my divorce. I just want out. But mm. what happens when you don't want out and the yeah. other person's pushing for it? What do you then do? So, ladies, you don't want to miss this one, but you've got the news piece for us. I do, I do, and I'm wondering if this couple is actually on the brink of divorce. Oh, gosh. Well, it's Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Yes. They separate. Yes. Well, the BBC News reported that Hollywood actors Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones are taking time apart after 13 years of marriage. 13 or 13? 13, 13 one, 13. three. Okay. Zeta-Jones' publicist told the BBC the couple had taken the decision in order to evaluate and work on their marriage. A source oh. told People magazine that difficulty over the, the last three years, including Douglas's battle with cancer and his wife's struggle with bipolar 2 dis disorder, had taken a toll on their marriage. Wow. They are reportedly in counselling to attempt to save their marriage. Now, wow. ladies, this is what I want to... I mean, first of all, when I've heard that, I'm sure, like, with the rest of you, this was so sad. Yeah. I felt Definitely. so sad. I was like, no, not them. They were like, yeah, they were like the, the long-standing couple that you'll say, yep, yeah, they're mature, they look yeah. like they've got... Okay, they're going through their issues, but at least they've... They look like they've got it together. Yeah. And when you see them together, they look, they're so glamorous. They look so happy, so grounded. And then when you hear that, you're like, oh. Yeah, because no. and actually many times on the show when we look for couples who've been together for a long yeah. time, oh, you're holding the flag for marriage, we say Zita Jones and Douglas, and then suddenly when I got this news this week, I was just like, oh my gosh, oh, this is so so sad. Yeah. Just because she seemed so determined, he seemed so determined yeah. for them to be together. Especially when it was going so, through the cancer. As exactly. Well. But ladies, I want to throw this question at you. They said something really interesting. They said in all, they felt like in order to reevaluate their marriage and to see if they could salvage it, they needed to separate. Do you think staying away from your spouse for a certain period of time, however long it may be, can help you solve the problems in your marriage? Well, separation, well, when is separation, it means because they still don't want to, you know, don't want to Go end for the it. divorce, yeah. They still, they, they, there's feelings there, there's things going on there. But they can't, you know, they can't do. They don't know how to deal with the, with those problems, so they just separate. But really, you know, I believe separation is because at the back of their mind, they they still want to be together, and that's what happened to me. That's why it lasted five years. Mm -hmm. I try after I left, you know, um, I tried to to deal with my issues, mm -hmm. to be able to see if it was me, if it was him, to come back together, but. It didn't you work. Know, it yeah. didn't work. I think it, it depends didn't. on the situation mm. because I think that for any of us, that if you come out of the situation, mm. it's, it becomes easier to deal with, and you don't want to put yourself back into conflict. Right. So I mean, yes, it's good mm. that they've been that they're going to counselling. I think, but I mean, they don't live in small houses. I mean, if yeah, you know, like one wing of someone's house. <laughs> surely you can you know, go Catherine in the east <laughs> wing, Douglas in the <laughs> west wing. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. The thing about separation, I think a lot of it is down to this because I, when I was going through my separation, mm. I think a lot of it is down to let's see if I will miss you enough to want to keep the marriage. Right. So let's mm. see if the feelings are there. Mm. That's what you're not thinking about it in a logical way. It's not from the mind. It's from the. It's from your heart. You're, you're separating to see. Look, is there? If, can I salvage some of the feelings that we had? Can I get them back? You know, when I, when we first met each other and we were on fire and you know we wanted to get married. Can I miss you enough not to divorce? Mm. And I think that is the root of the separation. And, and on that note, that's why I reckon it never works. That's why I bet you anyway, I'm sad to say it, but I reckon I'm just waiting to hear they're, they're getting divorced. divorced. Sorry. You know, I, I, I mean, they are a high profile celebrity couple and yeah. I made some, I've got some notes here. What the kind of pressures do you think they had on their marriage? Because look, I'm going to be honest here, as I should be anyway, because, you know, honesty is the best policy. Catherine is absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. 
Douglas is very charming, but he ain't all that. So I always used, and he's, I think he's several years older than her. Oh, much So I always her. had in the back of my mind, <clears throat> how is this working? Like, isn't she sometimes tempted? Isn't he sometimes tempted? And also many people tend to forget they signed a very, very special prenup before mm. they got married. So maybe it's this separation their way of avoiding them losing their money. <laughs> but it makes you know? it because he was a, a reformed sex addict. Oh. So a lot of their prenups um, centred around his fidelity and what she would get in the event of his infidelity. Right, OK. Um, but, I mean, I think that with some... Hollywood power couples, as I think they were yeah. seen, they're very clever and they're very astute. Yeah. And it's not always about looks mm. to a point, especially for men anyway. I mean, you mm. see in Hollywood, men are 50 and women are 50, they get offered two different kind of scripts and two different lots of money. Yeah. Um, but I think that she was thinking as well, look, the Douglas name is massive in Hollywood that can open doors. So she'd be also very clever in that way that even if she was tempted, she'd also be thinking about the ironclad prenup, but about yeah. what she would have stand to lose if she wasn't, um, you know, the other half of Michael Douglas. Yeah, yeah. Do you think also, after a while, they just got bored of each other? Because 13 years for Hollywood is a long time. That's almost like half a century for most, yeah. <laughs> for most of the couples in Hollywood. No offence. Yeah. But it is a long time. Do you think that deep down inside, perhaps, they might have got, got bored with each other? Or sometimes, many people, unfortunately, do get divorces because of health issues. They can't mm. take the fact that, you know, their loved one are is sick all the time and they have to take care of them. Maybe they've got their own issues and they can't be bothered all the time. Mm. Do you think that health perhaps paid... a a big role I in their, so. their breakup because one had cancer yeah. and the other one's got bipolar. I mean, the spectrum of health issues there are massive. I mean, you, I mean, you do make the, take the vows and you do, you know, say in sickness and, and, health health, and all this. But, but the truth of the matter is, when Catherine did get with Michael Douglas, she was a nobody. She was a darling buzz of Maystar, mm. and that was as far as it went. And he was like the high, high profile actor. But nowadays, she's everywhere. She's mm. doing really, really well. And I would just, I would just suspect that in the, in marriage, it would have been very difficult for her to balance her career life, mm. which is taking off very well now, mm. and then have her husband. Well, she's got her own issues already, and then have her husband who's not well. That would have taken a toll on her and their marriage so I think it does play a part definitely well do you know what going back into your divorces I just wanted to know what what would you say com well I know it's a bit weird comparing your divorce to theirs what would you say would be in your personal opinion their main point of breakup <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a bit of a random and a hard one <laughs> but like if you was to compare yourself to what they went through what would you think was their main root of breaking up looking at it from the outside in see I don't know because yeah, I so honestly cool. we don't know what they're like behind closed doors mm. and um to the public, they always seem, I think as Shireen said earlier, presented a united front, you know. It wasn't that long ago they were at the Oscars together and at um, his recent movie, um, Liberace. Mm. So we have not... I think it was a shock to everyone because we did not see any signs that these guys were at loggerheads or that they didn't like each other. Even at his recent... Um, when he was talking about his recent um, throat cancer, yeah. um, getting over that, yeah. he was citing her as yeah. a support yeah. and that That's she'd gone into point. rehab and was just saying, you know, she's gone there, you know, for a tune-up, as he called it, you know, mm -hmm. just to make sure that she's OK. So I think it was a shock because there were no signs whatsoever, yeah. whereas... In our own, you know, I think our own situations mm. were all very different as well. Yeah. Um, and it's like for Shireen, so she didn't want to get divorced. She didn't have any clue what was coming yeah. to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I had a few signs, mm. but it's like, I don't think that everyone else would have been able to see everything yeah. Yeah. because of how married couples are. You don't tend to, most people don't mm. tend to air their laundry in public anyway. It's so. True. And, I, and it's, it's very brave and commendable of all of you to come onto the show and to speak about it because I'm sure there's somebody that's watching this now and that is going to get the support and help that they need. Mm -hmm. But um, throwing some more questions back at you, I wanted to find out from you all, when did you get married and then when did you divorce? So how long was you married for and then how long into the marriage did you get a divorce? Like, Yolanda, how? Well, when did, what, how old was you first, actually, when you got I married? Was, I was 26. 26, so that's fairly young. Years ago, yeah. so, and when did, well, when did you get your divorce then? I got, div I got divorced <laughs> <laughs> two weeks ago. 
Oh my goodness, so recent. So, but yeah. okay, so you got married at 26, but you yeah. said you were separated for five years. Yeah, for about, yeah, four to five years separated. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, sub um, I had to, I fled domestic violence. Right. So, um, okay. I mean, it was coming anyway, but I did try after I was separated, um, even though um, for, a, for months we were not seeing each other at all, but at some point he came back into my life, but obviously I put limits, let's say, no, you, you know, you stay in your house, I stay in mine, but let's see if it works out. Mm. But, you it know, didn't. we tried on and off for two years, I think we tried and no, uh, it just, it, it was happen. no, no. And then obviously uh, the other two, the, ta the last two years when I start proceeding the mm -hmm. divorce, um, he didn't want to sign. He didn't want to <laughs> no. sign. Do you know, and I want to... It just doesn't make sense. And this is the thing. I want to get to this um, mm -hmm. after the break. We have to go to a break. I want to find out what happens, like, in your case, when the other half does not want to sign. Like, mm -hmm. what, what do you do from both angles? So f from his angle, he didn't want to sign the divorce. From your angle, you didn't really want to get no. divorced, Shireen, mm -hmm. and so on. So I, we'll be discussing this after the break. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, on today's show we're talking divorces. What do you do if you're going through a divorce and how do you deal with the aftermath of a divorce? And I've got three lovely guests with me in the studio today sharing their experiences very bravely. But also, if you have any questions or you just want to share your comments and your views on divorce, please feel free to give us a call on 0207 686 6300. We'd love to hear what you have to say on divorces. Now, just before we went into the break, Yolanda, you also talking about your other half at the time he did not want to sign the divorce after coming out of domestic violence so what happened how did he eventually sign it well it I just made him see that it was not point I mean he was already with some he's already with someone else so, mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay so how do you get this right he wow. was with someone you're separated yeah. he's with someone else you are literally begging him to just sign the divorce and he didn't want to do it no why? He wanted to try again. But I think he's, he's into a cycle. I mean, I, I also because he's, we have a child. So, right, OK. Uh, you know, it was just trying. Yeah, too. But I know he knows that it wouldn't work, because it didn't work for seven years or whatever, five years exist. But, um, but you know, just, I believe, just to try to see what would I say? But mm. no, he, he just and then eventually he signed. Yeah, every every document that will come, it will be you know, please do this, please do that, do do it, sign it, do fill it up. Mm. It was it was like that. It was like two years like that. And then it, well, the whole separation and divorce, it yeah. was five years. Yeah, five years is a long time. How did you mentally stay stable? Because some people would fall into depression. Mm. Yeah, well, I was really depressed when I left. I was really depressed, I was really down um, emotionally, I, I, my self-esteem was down. Uh, so I had, uh, for the first three years of my separation, I had hope mm. that, you know, that things would change. Um, but um, it, it, was, it was really bad. I received, I had to, I had to receive uh, help, right. uh, extra help, because um, by myself I couldn't cope. Because, uh, I mean, I have the children as well, so... And it's, it's, it's a second serious relationship. So I didn't want to see myself as a single mom again. I mm. didn't want to see, I didn't want to show to my family, mm. you know, oh, you You're know, broken down broken again. Relationship, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was, it was really hard. Um, do you know what? Going into that, you mentioned children, and that's something that I do definitely want to bring up later on in the show. I mean, what do you do if you, you're going through a divorce and you've got kids? How do you keep them stable mm. while you're still keeping yourself together? But Shireen, you was on the flip side of yeah. um, Yolanda's situation. Yes. You didn't want to separate. Not at all. But he did. Yeah. I mean, tell us a little bit of the background of the story and what happened. Well, I come from a Caribbean family. <laughs> family <laughs> you know, Caribbean families are normally very tightly knit. And in my family, no one really divorces. Right. Even if the relationship's not going, it's, trust you're me, in this they're going to be, you're in there till life. So divorce in our family, you didn't really see it. So uh, when I grew up, my mum always told me, look, your first boyfriend, that's who's going to be your husband. And I, I grasped that concept straight away. That was my dream. I said, mm. right, my first boyfriend is going to be my husband. And lo and behold, my first boyfriend, I was so happy that he liked me. 
that was it. I said, I'm going to marry this guy. And that's <laughs> it. End of. And I was 21 years old when I got married. 21? I was 18 when I met him. Wow. So mm -hmm. we were together for three years okay. before we got married. And we had our, um, there was like some problems in culture because right. our cultures were completely different. Mm. Um, at that time, I wasn't really thinking about our future because I thought, well, when you get married, yeah. then we'll sort that all out. I was just so happy that, you know, he likes me, I like him. I've never had a boyfriend before. I was just so happy. <laughs> and, you know, we had the, a, a massive, the, I'm the oldest of the family, so my mum, she took all her life savings, her thousands, and made a massive wedding, oh you know? Oh my goodness. We had a fantastic day. <laughs> amazing. No, it's true. We've got to say all of it. It was fabulous. It's like all the effort was in, I finally found someone who likes me. We are going to get married. Mm. And that was it. After, we'll sort everything else out after the marriage. This yeah. is the focus was the wedding day. And after the marriage, that's when we started to really get to know who we really were. Right. And suddenly we realised there were so, there were so many s small differences that I thought were small. But for him, it was huge. For me, I just want oh, small week. Okay, we disagree with this one, but we make up. We disagree yeah. with this one. This week we have a blow, but we make up. That week we have another blow, but we make up. But I just didn't think nothing of it. Yeah. Until one day, two years into the marriage, and it was literally like that. It was like a uh, little fight here, nothing massive. There was no abuse or anything yeah. like that. It was just disagreements, disagreements. Um, and one day I came home, literally, and he, uh, he was surrounded by suitcases. What? Yeah, I, literally. And actually, that night before, we'd, he came home a little bit late, but we, it was peaceful. I wouldn't say there was any argument, anything like that, no. And uh, he just said, I'm, I'm leaving you. I don't love mm. you anymore. Just like that. Those, those are the words. At first, I was like, what are you, what's going on here? What are you doing with all this? It hadn't time? sunk in it had, I was just looking. I was thinking, it was very hard for my mind to kind of, kind of digest everything that was happening at that moment. And he goes, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. I, I just don't love you anymore. And I, all I can remember of that time, because I was 24 at that time, so that, I'm, that was like seven years ago now. Mm. All I can remember is throwing myself on the floor and holding his legs and saying, please don't leave me. Where are you going? And within, I think, if I, if I could blink, his brother was at the door of the car <laughs> and he was gone. Oh, and no. that is what happened. And for days, I couldn't get in contact with him. I finally did get through to him after weeks. And then when I did see him, he turned up at my workplace saying he wants a divorce. And that's what happened. Wow, I mean, yeah. hearing everything back, it's just a little bit of a shock. And if I'm shocked, I can imagine how you went through. I was devastated. How? I was in denial. I didn't tell anyone. I went to work as normal. Really? I, to, I didn't tell my family. I didn't tell my friends. I didn't tell anybody. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I know, you, I know you used to... Uh, Lisa's friends. my very good friend here. And she, she didn't know. I didn't tell her. I didn't tell anybody. Did you keep it a secret then? Because I was in denial. I said, this is not happening. I just thought, do you know, I really did. I cried and I, I spent the whole of those two weeks looking for him phoning him, but I was in denial. I said, this is not happening. This is so not happening. My goodness. OK, because I'm, <laughs> I'm still trying to get my head around all of this. So what I want to figure out is, was there any telltale signs? Because I know you said there was a little blow up no. here. A little... I, I thought for me, for me, there wasn't anything I, I could see that would merit him wanting me to, us to get divorced. Right. I didn't cheat on him. I didn't do any. I couldn't see anything, to mm. be honest with you. I, I really, and I'd call him, I'd text him, complain, like, what, have you, what have I done? If I've done something, please tell me what it is and I'll change. I promise you, I'll change, I'll change. Nothing. Mm. And he just said to me, when we finally sat down and he decided to meet with me, mm. it was very tearful and very emotional. And he just basically said, we've got different vision in life and he just wants to do other things. And that was how everything began. But even then, that's when I needed to start telling people this is what was going on. Right. And it was so, the realisation of it, because until that time, I was in denial mode. I said, he's going to come back right. and we're going to work this out. Yeah. But he didn't. And then it was just the, the pressure to get divorced, the pressure to get divorced. He, he wanted me to sign the paper. He wanted me to sign, And there was no grounds. Mm -hmm. So he said, he actually said to me, put that up in unfaithful. You have to divorce me. I can't divorce you. Because there was no ground. There was no wow. ground for us to get divorced. Wow. So that was extra, that was, that's what added to the pain of it. And I'm mm. telling you, Jennifer, I've never been more broken in life. I don't think, I don't think anything, not even death. I think if he died, I would have been be it would have been better for me. Wow. That's how painful it was. It was so, 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 so painful because I didn't know what I'd done. And I've just lost the guy that I've invested all my time, my, which I felt my virginity I gave to. Mm. So all of that goes into your mind, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. This is the person that you know, I've given myself to. I've stood in front of everyone, professing my, I believe I was going to be with me forever. My whole life is based on our dreams together in marriage. I don't have a life. I don't know what to do without mm. him. That's how I felt. What, I mean, hearing all of this, what then was the lowest point? Because 
you going for a range of things. Was the hardest point him leaving, or the hardest point was signing that paper and then it's yeah. official? Oh that, my gosh, I think it fine, was. It's finally a done deal. We're not married yeah, anymore. Because actually, to be honest, it took about. Uh, we actually separated. I was near twenty three, so it. To be honest, I'm the one that was delaying it. I just couldn't sign. I couldn't sign the paper. I got it in the post. You mm. get you get it in the post to sign, and. Um, I just couldn't do it. And uh, just one day, I came, I came to the point where I realised he just didn't want me. I think that was the lowest point because until then, I was still believing. I was trying to dress up. I was going to his workplace. I went to his, I found where he was and I went to visit him. I said, please, let's make it, make, make it work. I don't think I could have done anything else other than, you know, lie on the floor and just, you know, be a doormat for him to mm. get him back. But it was the realisation that, my goodness, this is really happening. Mm. He's even paid for the divorce, everything. I, he doesn't want me. That was, I think that was the lowest point, realising that this guy don't recognise him anymore, he's a stranger to me, yeah. and he doesn't want me anymore. That do was the know, lowest point. Do you know, before we go into the up, <laughs> the up point of this, because obviously there's a turnaround to all of your stories, Lisa, yes. now I want to hear your story because you got married fairly young as well. I got married like exactly one year before Sheree. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I was 20, yes, when I got once married. Once again, that's very young. Some people are halfway through university at that point. <laughs> it's been, but I was, um, I'm the eldest child and I've always been mature. Right. So that's why my mum had no problem with me getting married because she saw that I had, you know, quite a mature head on my shoulders and I'd be able to go out there mm. um, and be okay, as yeah. she thought. Um, and it was, I guess it's kind of... A, a little bit like Shireen, a little bit like Yolanda, yeah. in terms of, I didn't want to get divorced to start with. It was him that brought it up and about right. we should separate, we should divorce, and I was... Before you get into that, let's rewind to wedding day. So you've <laughs> gotten married, because you've gotten married to this guy. Yeah. He's, you know, supposedly the man of your dreams. Yeah. How long into the marriage did things start to go a bit sour and him wanting to go and so on? Probably about uh, a couple of years into it. It's maybe like between one and a half to two years. Mm. And um, I think it was major change as well that's, that's, that kind of started it off because he had a good job working at a radio station. He then lost his job. Oh. Um, and I didn't find out like the real reasons. He kind of like glossed it over, but it's only later on I found out it was more to do with how he'd behaved and how he'd carried on and things like that. Mm. And then um, he'd um, gotten a, uh, a job like in a barber shop. That's what he went back to doing mm. uh, for a while. Um, and it was like there, he went from here to here. Wow. And it was like the clothes, the attitude, how he carried on, it was just like totally different from and that person that I knew. Mm. And um, it wasn't like just me that thought so, it'd be like friends would be thinking, like, what happened? What happened to you? <laughs> like, you know, like there was one, um, there was a wedding that we went to and some of my friends hadn't seen him for a while. And then they saw him at that wedding and they were like, what? <laughs> like yeah, I don't really, I don't really know who this guy is. I mean, because it's like no disrespect to people who want to dress a certain way, carry a certain way, but that wasn't the guy that I went for. Yeah. So I wanted someone that was quite clean cut, you know. And then he went from doing that to like, it's like wearing like the jewelry and the chains and like growing the hair and like you know going back to Cairns and that wasn't me at all. That wasn't the person that mm. I met. That wasn't the person that I then fell in love with and married. Mm. It became someone totally different. But it wasn't just the outside, the inside side change of it so really? it became like that kind of attitude is and what came about mm. and there were people that are then were my friends who then they knew him they'd known him sorry for longer mm. and they still didn't recognize that person that he had, had become and um you know there were occasions that he then wouldn't wear his wedding ring really or um yeah and it just kind of lots of different things went on from there and um, there was even like, there was one time um, we'd go to my mum's for Christmas and then I was got there and then he'd be like, okay, I'm not coming. I'm like, okay. It, <laughs> and it was only because then my mum spoke to him that then he, he actually came. But there was just a lot of different things like that. And then even when he did get a better job going on to, you know, making a career out of something, okay. um, again, nothing seemed to change with the attitude. Um, and then he was the one pushing, pushing for, I think she separates not working, she did this, and I'd be like, no, we can work through this. Because again, like showing, you know, arguments and things like that, but you think you can get over them and work whatever it yeah. is out. Um, and then in the end, I just said, fine, let's separate. 
and um, I actually moved out. <laughs> really? Yeah. So what would you say would be the lowest point as to what, if I could say, was the final blow? Was it signing the divorce papers or the actual separation whereby she felt, I can't take this no more, I have to move from this person? I think it was actually that he said that after I separated then, like even the, the, the same night, because I didn't actually tell him uh, when I was moving out, I tried, I'd moved out because he would go and come and like live the ships in the night. So it could be wow. like two days, I didn't see him. So I left him a note, he came home and he saw that and he called me and like, you know, saying, no, we've made a mistake, want you to come back, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But it was the fact that he then didn't fight for me or fight to, to save get back, that. yeah. yeah. Um, and so from then I was like, no, I'm just going to press on. I'm going to go for the divorce. And yeah. you know, before we go into how you all got through it, because it's, I'm, 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 it's like really bewildering <laughs> when you hear all of these stories. Because you, you, divorces are made so cheap mm -hmm. out there. You know, you get, you see celebs getting married, mm -hmm. and then in 24 hours they get divorced. But sometimes you don't realize how much pain and hurt goes through. And I know you've got a few pointers there. I wanted to yes. go into it just to break it up a bit. Um, well, these points are just really nice ones for what you do in order to get over mm. the divorce. So, um, can I just say though, before we move on to this, I think mm. this is really, really key, if mm. we've got time, is the reason why we're all sitting here like this and everyone's like talking their story like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very painful for all of us, is because we received the right help. Yeah. And um, I would encourage anyone who is in a similar situation or going through anything at this time or has been through um, what we've been through and would like help, to email us at comments at dkw.me if you'd like to find out where we got this help to be able to be here, yeah. sitting here on national TV telling our stories in the way that we are. So comments at dkw.me or you can call us now in the studio 0207 686 6300. And the type of help that we got um, was at this amazing, amazing help centre. Mm. And I'm telling you, as a divorced person, you do feel low. You feel yeah. at your old time, time like you lose your mm. identity. Yeah. You don't know who you are. And at that place, I can say that I was empowered to find who I really was. Mm -hmm. And I actually enjoyed being single again, actually wow. being a true single. Because before, I was looking for that guy to complete me. I was looking for that guy to make my dreams come true. And that was completely wrong. Mm -hmm. And at this help center and also the, the love school, mm -hmm. like classes like the love school, they empower you to enjoy single life. Mm -hmm. And so you know who you are and to value yourself. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to go into more points that you, we, we were inspired at that, at that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you've got to get a new focus in life isn't yeah. it girls yeah mm. new focus you know? what is a new focus because maybe i'm sat there and i'm going through a divorce right now yes and i'm hearing all of your wonderful stories and i'm like well i feel like absolute rubbish right now i'm mm -hmm. on my couch <laughs> with the duvet over me and i'm absolutely miserable i've been crying my heart out all night yeah what is a new focus it's they need to focus on something else other than that situation. Their new focus needs to be themselves. Right. Actually think about what makes me happy. What do I enjoy? Even yes. if it's taking up a hobby or, you know, if you're feeling you're overweight, going to the gym, you know, joining a Zumba class, investing in yourself yes. because Focusing on that situation, you're just going to be more depressed. Mm -hmm. There's going to be nowhere if all you're doing is thinking about, I'm divorced, I'm divorced, no one's going to want me, I'm divorced. He left me because I'm horrible, because I'm fat, and all this, and mm. all that. Do what something. What people say about yeah. me, you've got the that pressure of people. Because you, you really see yourself ugly. You yeah. see yourself ugly, like, you know, why he treat me like that? Why, why all these things? You start wondering, why is this happening? Why this happened to me twice? So you see yourself ugly, you see, you see yourself like nothing. Yeah. You become nothing. So when you start investing in yourself and you, you go to, you know, like we went to this help centre, mm. you know, they, they, you start seeing your value. But for three years, I felt like nothing. Wow. You know, he would come and go and then they would feel, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, rubbish. So yeah. you're feeling you know, you're fine and you had one mirror. meeting yes. and then you just felt, oh my gosh, feel rubbish again and yeah. like you're yeah. back to the beginning. It's a, as I said, it's not focusing on situation, it's investing in yourself. Yeah. Because, find, you know, appreciating your true value and working on who you are. Not yes. for anyone else, but for yeah. you. For yourself. And, also, so and it's right. also a good time for you to, because this is what happened with me, to invest in the relationships that you have mm. with your family, with yes. your friends, right. you know, mm. taking a holiday. Yeah. What have you not done in the marriage? Because you know, in marriage, you've got to sacrifice a lot, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 
most of it. I mean, if it's an, if it's not the right mar marriage, then you, you have lots of limits. Yeah. yeah. So then you know when you come out of that. So what were the dreams that you had before? Pursue them. Yeah. That's kind of thing. Also, not to dwell on negative feelings. Right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. This is a easier said than done. This is a bit <laughs> of a hard one. Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. What if, for example, Yolanda, you you experience domestic abuse? How do you not have hard feelings towards that person who's abused you and made you feel so small? Because, you know, mm -hmm. it really does take a bigger person. And that's not just domestic abuse, it's emotional abuse as well. I mean, in your mm -hmm. example, he would leave for a couple of days and then come back. How do you not have hard feelings? He, he literally left you. Uh -huh. With yes. no sign. Yeah, and with all lots of debt as well, because left him with all the bills. Yeah, and 20, yeah. The 20, debt. Uh -huh. 20, 000. And, and, no, and two kids. Two, two kids. Twenty thousand pounds yeah. off of debt and two. Now, yeah. <laughs> you know how on earth? Do you not have I, a grudge? I'm looking at the, <laughs> the How do you not have hard feelings towards yeah, this Yeah, how do you not have a grudge? Well, um, <laughs> I realised I had. Obviously, I had, yeah. and I had, but I realised there's no point because mm. it's only affecting me. He's yeah. living his life. I realised, yeah. you know, he's living his life. He's 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 got someone by his side now. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got my kids. I have to take care of them. I have to be daily with them. Mm -hmm. And these grudges are, are only affecting me, affecting me. Mm -hmm. you know. So you have to move on. You have to find a way and say, you know, that's it, it's past. Um, I, can, I used to, for, for a while, I couldn't look at his eyes. I couldn't mm. even answer his phone. He would call my daughter and I would say, yes, there you mm. go, just take <laughs> it. Yeah. You know, but they see that as well. So right. it's, 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 I have to, I had to change. I had to remove all those grudges. I had to get rid of all hard feelings and I have to forget about the past. It's gone. Mm. I got mature. I learned from my mistakes. Mm. You know, I have to see in a different way, not blaming him only, but see yeah, my mistakes yeah, as well. That's very see important. where I went wrong. Mm. You know, why is this happening? Because yeah. I shouldn't, I knew I shouldn't marry him in mm. the first place. Mm. But I did, I went ahead with it. So you have to look at your decisions. What, what, do you, what did I do wrong? And just sort it out, just life goes on. Yeah. That's it. Just I like what on. she said because at the end of the day, she, you do feel angry. And it's important for you to be able to cry and not, you know, it's okay to cry and then yeah. it out. Do you, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? The pain and everything. But also, there gets, there gets to a point where you've just got to stop crying yeah. and use that anger and all the anger and all the bad feeling that you have as a you channel it into something good for yourself that yeah. same anger and revolt that you have that he's done That's is right put it into yourself. no do you know what i am not going to let this man define me yeah. and, and he wants to you know mm -hmm. what we've got to do it's 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 yeah. actually hold on he's going to see that he's missing something here <laughs> That's, and it's not going to be for him it's going to be for someone special mm. but you have to channel because that hatred that you have towards it, it only breaks you down more yeah. and you're the only one that's losing i think you you have to get to that point where you realize that and what yeah. Shereen said about girlfriends as well and, and investing in your friends yes. because that's what helps with with us as well yeah, you know definitely. eating pizza <laughs> watching yeah. a dvd watching you know what I mean? Mean, the little things that make you happy yeah. with your friends that does help too another point uh don't hold on to past onto the past and what, past what, dreams like you said so dream yes. new. Yes. have right. new dreams it's true and something i remember we said we were going to go here and you go to this place i remember we were here together and oh, oh yeah. look at this photo oh, oh gosh. you that's know like you do that of course you do that sabotaging yourself you look at the wedding pictures you look at the wedding video then someone posts something on facebook with your wedding picture and you're just like why <laughs> <laughs> but you know you have to get to that point where you just think do you know what i've got to make new dreams this was not the dream mm. and i remember someone told me this and it was very important they, they said to, they said to me look shireen take the best out of that relationship look at all mm. the things that you did wrong and you build yourself up in it for the new relationship okay that went wrong so in my new relationship this is not what i'm gonna look for yeah. the signs right. look for the things that you didn't yeah. see yeah. that now you have more wisdom Wisdom. And it rich, isn't it enrich yeah. you? It's yeah. you become a stronger character yeah. because of it. Yeah. Do you know what? Just before we go into the break, because we're going to have another couple coming on to talk about their experience about divorce, mm -hmm. I want to hear quickly about your ups, because you, you talked about the lowest points. How did you quickly get through it? I'll start with you, Lisa. How did you, how did you get through it? And what would you say was your main focus or tip for a lady out there that's going through divorce or a guy? Um, well. I remember when I first wanted to move out and I was like to my mum, I want to come back home, I'm very lovely. Because <laughs> <laughs> she used to work around the corner from me as well, so it was really easy. But she reminded me that, you know, you're made of tougher stuff than this. You know, um, the situation is happening now, but you will be able to get over it. She was like, 
Do not allow yourself to just be down this whole time. You need to actually get up and do something about it. Go and get somewhere to live them with your friends. Go and, Jimmy, go and, and carry on and live life. And even like my, because uh, it wasn't long after that she met my now stepdad. And he remembers the first Christmas that he met me. And he says that, that I spent most of it just curled up on the chair, um, just in front of like the telly or in the living room, not participating much. But one year later, then he knows me as I am now. He said, you know, being confident, you know, going out there, doing what I've got to do. And, and that's with the, the counselling that I learned, like, like Shireen said, at the help centre, messages like from the love school, um, but also having good friends and having good family and investing in myself and going for it. And it's like now I'm at a point where yeah, I want to have another relationship, I want to be married again, but I also can take what I learned the mistakes that I made as well and not commit them again, yeah. but go ahead, look forward and yeah. yeah. Yolanda? Yeah, well, um, I, was, I was the kind of girl that, you know, I was in the, rela I was in the relationship, I left my friends on the side. Mm. So when everything came down, I had to rely, you know, on family, on friends to bring me back up. Mm -hmm. And um, I have no regrets. Mm. I have no regrets, you know, I've learned a lot. And, uh, but yes, the help of the friends, you know, get busy, yeah. just get mm. busy, just get doing things. Just, that's, that's, that's what you have to do, get busy doing things, you know, sorting out yourself, um, you know, going to salons, <laughs> going to, <laughs> and treat you yourself, know, treat yourself, yourself, treat yourself, because every woman is, is you know, is, it must find her value, because I believe, you know, everyone, everyone has, I mean, men and women, they not only special. women, they are special. They are special, they are here for a reason. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's it, it's yeah. just get over it. <laughs> <laughs> just move on. Well, there you have it. Do you know what? After the break, we're going to have a couple who are both divorcees and found love within each other. And they're going to be sharing their experience on how they managed to get through their rough patches individually. But do you know what, guys? It was great having you on the show. I really learned a lot about divorce. And also, once again, if you do have any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call on 0207 686 6300. We'll be back after this short break. Welcome to today's show. We're talking about divorce, a very painful subject that sometimes can have a horrible aftermath. But is there life after divorce? Well, on today's show, we've been proving that there is life after divorce and you can get through it. And we've got a caller on the line. Hello. 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 Hi there. What's your name? My name is Adam. Adam. Hi there, Adam. Let us know what, are, what is your thoughts on divorce and what you've heard so far on the show? Um, actually, um, to be honest, I'm not a fan of divorce. Okay. I, I really, really don't like divorce at all. I believe uh, whatever it is should be, should be worked through. Both parties, the wife and the husband, should work through it. That's, mm -hmm. that's just what I believe. But in some cases, there are some circumstances whereby one is not willing to go ahead or is not willing to work through it due to one thing or another. Then I guess at that point and at that moment, I guess the, the inevitable reason to divorce should yeah. go ahead and write me people. On the very, very left to me, I would that's no that's something that I don't really really believe. Really, um, because I believe it, it it will affect so many people that are attached to that wedding, that marriage, that couple together. Especially the children. Yeah. We're talking about the emotions here, we're talking about the personality, we're talking about the inner mind, which is the best possible kind of um, this is the embodiment of our physical being. Mm. So if the inner mind is, is, is downgraded or is being depressed, there's nothing good that can come out of it except God is it. It's just what I feel. Okay. So way at the evil. But I don't blame people for going for it if it's justified in that it's all tried or one party has really been tried and the second party is not really forthcoming, then the inevitable thing thing should actually go on. Fair enough, yeah, I agree with you there. Thank you very much, Adam, for your participation. You're welcome. Thank you, bye. So here in the studio, I have the lovely Gillen and Victor. Hi there. Hello. Hello. I just wanted to find out your situation on like the show at hand. I believe you've been listening to everything that has been said today. We had Lisa and Yolanda on today's show talking about their experiences of divorce and how they managed to get through it. 
I wanted to hear a little bit about your story because you used to are both interesting. You're both divorcees. Yes, yes we were. We were. Right. So before we, get, <laughs> <laughs> before we get in, before we get into like obviously now you're together. I mm. wanted to find out was were you divorced from two different relationships or were you divorced and then you re remarried or how did what, what was it? How did it work? Um, well, I'll start. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> right, I um. I got married, well, my first marriage, and um, obviously looking for um, a future, a good future with the person, you know, I got married to. And then um, we had our ba first baby. And then after that, uh, the first child got ill six weeks into, into his life. And that brought tension between you know, myself and my ex and their family. And that went on um, for quite a while because the, um, the child was in the hospital right. uh, for 13 weeks. Wow, that's a long time. That's a, long, a very long time. And then um, I wanted the doctors to, um, you know, to do what they had to do. <laughs> but the family and my ex were against it. Really? Yes, they were. So that brought um, a kind of division. Mm. So, and then, um, to cut the long story short, you know, the um, relationship went down, actually mm -hmm. broke down. And then um, she said that she wanted to go to, you know, to her parents, mm -hmm. you know, after the baby came out from the hospital, and which I consented, I consented to. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then after four weeks, when she was due to come back, and that was it, really. She and she, she decided to more. yes. She decided to stay over, and it was just like shocking, really. How so? How long was you married then? Um, for four years. Four years. Yes. Wow, that's, a, four that's years. quite a, some time. So you know, you've had this traumatic experience with your child, your first child. Exactly. And then, due to differences in how the child should have been treated, yep. you separated. So was it her that instigated the divorce, or was it yourself? Um, uh, I would say the um, separation went through a number of years. It lasted, I mean, off and on. Um, we were, one minute we were making up, and the other minute, you know, everything was started breaking up. breaking up again. And that went on for four years, really. Wow. Yes, and... That's a long time. It, it, so it, in total, how, sorry to interrupt, in yes. total, how long was it from the moment you got married to the actual signing of the papers? How long was you together and separated then? It was five and a half years. Five and a half years. Five and a half years, yes. Wow. And, um, and I was emotionally, I was kind of emotionally um, affected. It's just a high and low. I wanted the marriage to, um, to succeed. And then the next, next minute, you know, and the family said, well, I have to come, come over and live with them and, and all that sort of, um, Wow. stories so I decided in the end I decided I had enough because the, well you know it you was really it hard hard for, for 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 somebody because the thing is is that um one minute I had a family I had a house and then the next minute you didn't it have all it went in, in flames Do you know before you go into that I yes. just want to quickly go into Guylaine so that we don't run out of time mm -hmm. very briefly so what was your story you was married and then how did it break down uh, for me, it all started when um, I got married in France and then um, I was like 23 years old, got married and then decided to move to London mm. for a better life. Mm. And then as soon as we arrived in London, um, things were not working, we were arguing all the time. But this is something we, we had even before we got married because we were dating for a few months mm. and we were already arguing for a lot of little things but we thought you know if we love each other you know you know nothing is impossible so the emotion the love cover we tried to cover everything you know thinking now i know it was not love but mm. at the time for me it was just good enough and so when we moved to london then um a few months later i had a baby girl and then uh, still the, the relationship was not 100 percent. so when did you get divorced and then how did you find each other um, oh, I got divorced. Uh, it took a long time as well. It was on and off, on and off. It took about more than five years 
to actually get divorced because I, at that point it just didn't want me but I was fighting for the divorce because we had a child together mm -hmm. and I just want the child to have a father so I was mm -hmm. fighting and he was telling me I don't want you anymore Gosh. and it took me five years to actually say okay mm -hmm. it, this man doesn't want me so I have to move on so I got divorced. Oh gosh five years so how did you find each other very quickly I know we're really running out shortly out of time here well, but how um, did you find each other? Yes, um, I was the one who, who <laughs> saw her and then um, obviously liked what I saw. Mm -hmm. However, um, it took me a while to um, approach her. It took me um, eight months yeah. to really approach her. And then after that, I've done my, well, before that, I've done my um, research, my so. research, my homework. <laughs> my <laughs> so, I mean, I can see you're happily married now and you're a testament that there is life after divorce. You know, in like 30 seconds, because literally we're running out of time. Yeah. What would you say quickly to the divorcees out there? Because you're both married and you're very happy together. What would you say to them? Uh, mm -hmm. I would say that you have to put the past behind you mm. and forgive. Yeah. Forgive whatever happened, just put it behind you because otherwise you're never going to be able to move forward. And for the sake of the child as well, if you have children or even without children as well, you really have to forgive. Let go of the past. Don't try to stay and fight and uh, say who did that, who didn't do that. And then mm -hmm. Look at yourself as well. What did I do wrong? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it takes two to tango, is yeah, that how they say it? Yes, yes. And when you look at what you did wrong and the person did wrong as well, it does help you to see, okay, I was wrong there as well. So it wasn't just the, the only one person. Mm -hmm. And it really helped. And if you for forgive, and then start all over again. And that, that, that's, that, that, that's the, 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 the help, yeah. the recipe for mm -hmm. to move forward and be happy again. That's it. And as you can see, they're happily married now. And, you know, no matter what your situation is, there's definitely life after divorce. Maybe you feel down. Maybe you feel like there's no way out of your situation, but you can pick yourself up and get through it. If you want more information and help on today's show, please, please feel free to email us at comments at dkw.me and we'll be more than happy to reply back. I'm afraid we've come to the end of our show. It was a brilliant show today, but from the DKW studio, take care and have a wonderful Sunday. Bye.